Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. Today we'll be talking about 8 signs you're channeling. A very interesting topic for anyone who feel like something is happening and sometimes you can't explain how certain information just came to you. Like sometimes you talk with someone and just the right words come to you or sometimes you feel inspired to create an artwork and you have no idea where it came from. Like, you know, sometimes we observe great artists or great musicians and it feels like they're in the flow, they're in a certain type of a stream, like something is just moving through them. And it's very interesting thing that uh, we can actually accomplish here, as in yesterday's video I've mentioned to you that it's not so much about your ego self, it's more about allowing things to move through yourself, right? A neuroscientist, David Eagleman, said Neurons in the brain are like satellite dish. They're tuned to pick up a particular kind of information in the world. And Nikola Tesla said the brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and information. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. So, our brain is only a receiver. Neurons in the brain serve as antennas, calling in or attracting in information that are the most familiar to us. Sometimes we may call them as belief systems. When we hold on to certain beliefs, we don't open up to receive something new, to think about something new, to question something, to be curious. That's why in any kind of a human evolution, at some point we must become curious. We must open up and start looking for new ways, for new way of thinking, for questioning beliefs, because that's when we detach from our old way of thinking. In our science, they say when your brain runs under a beta brainwave frequency, most of the time you will feel isolated and you will feel like um, your world is exactly how you think it is. And if your beliefs are not helpful for your growth, then the way you think the world works is quite destructive. It, not, it doesn't help you to, to grow, to evolve and to manifest beautiful things. While if we enter into more coherent state, which is in neuroscience called alpha brainwave frequency and then through alpha brainwave frequency you can access also into lower, more slower waves like delta and theta brainwave frequencies. When you enter these slower, slower frequencies, you start to detach from your known beliefs, from your known perception and you start to feel so much more connected with all life, with universe, with existence. And there's a very interesting story of a woman who was um, who was dealing with depression and she attained one workshop where she learned to meditate. It was a scientific workshop where people were learning to use certain type of meditations that work according to neuroscience from HeartMate Institute. And she attended that workshop and when she started meditating at the beginning she was irritated, it was very hard for her to keep the attention on breathing and slowing down her breathing. But at a certain point she started losing the sense of time, she started losing the sense of space and she kind of get lost in the infinite space. And suddenly she started seeing huge blue beings and one of these beings came to her and it said to her that she will be fine, that everything is okay with her, that she's loved, she's protected. And then that being gave to her a crystal and she put that crystal, it was all happening in her mind, she put that crystal into her heart 
and suddenly she started seeing how depression and sadness and all these negative emotions turned into water and slowly that water just left her body and then slowly she came back into her body and she started feeling so much lighter and depression was gone and she was healed and and she experienced an incredible mystical experience where she connected to something beyond her beliefs and that is one form of channeling when we open up and we experience something beyond our known perception so today i want to talk about eight signs that you are channeling and usually when it comes to channeling it happens to us the way that's the most pleasant and the most familiar to us like for example if um I'm an artist and the way I've started channeling, firstly it happened art, I've started seeing visions, I've started seeing pictures and I had no idea it's um, that's what's happening to me. Just um, when I started showing my art to people, so many people felt such a deep connection with it, some experienced it as a type of healing, some started crying, some observed it and experienced goosebumps and I thought well it's very interesting and because it was the most familiar it was also the easiest for me I just feel I was born artist like this is one of my missions and sometimes when I'm making these videos it's just like something starts flowing through me and I know many of you are experiencing this on your daily basis like sometimes you're talking to a friend and the right words come through you. Sometimes you talk with um, someone and you're like in a certain phase of your life where you don't know what to do and that person just says exactly what you needed to hear. Sometimes you're watching a video and you hear exactly what you needed at that certain point of your life. That's how channeling happens. It happens through so many different sources so it's not about being attached to an idea like you want to see light beings or you want to see a jesus or whatever it's just opening up and not being attached to anything and that's when usually the magic happens like just relaxing your body when you relax your body your brain will go into more coherent state where you open up the doors of your subconscious mind and that's where you usually start channeling so it's truly just relaxing like calming down your heart by slow breathing and elevating your emotions into a higher frequency of love like maybe thinking about a person you truly love unconditional love and feeling it and just experiencing it and allowing your body to kind of emerge in this loving sensation and just letting go and letting go and being present and at peace in this infinite space and just you know keeping up with it so the first sign you may experience your channeling in your life is a heightened intuition more intense intuition like out of nowhere you may start thinking about a certain person out of nowhere idea may find you out of nowhere something very deep may awaken within you and you may not know what it is and sometimes you really need to slow down and ask yourself what's happening what am i feeling like why do i feel this why am i've just started thinking about this person like i have a friend of mine that uh, we don't see each other frequently but we always have these moments where we just out of nowhere start to think about each other and when i think about him i write him a message and then he says oh i was just thinking about writing you a message or vice versa and many of us have this kind of experiences so this is when your intuition awakens and your field your energy field connects with the field of that certain thing you need to know so that information can come to you or the connection can happen with that certain type of a person or sometimes if you're dealing with something challenging your intuition may tell you what not to do sometimes you feel very strong attraction towards something else 
like towards something that may be healthier like certain disease and your body will tell you don't go there or i don't know this treatment will not be useful try something else always trust your intuition the second sign is having a major aha moment you know when something just clicks that's when you've most probably detached from a certain old limitation a certain old belief and you've experienced what I call spontaneous realization. Spontaneous realization, it's something very beautiful that just happens. It's when we start to know something, we don't just think about it anymore, we don't just believe into it, we know it. It's aha moment, something clicks. Like you would found a new piece of the puzzle, you put it in and it fits perfectly. A very beautiful sensation that always awakens us up to a new degree of understanding. The third one is very interesting, ringing in the ears. But don't misplace it with tinnitus, that's often related to pain. So when ringing in the ear happens very gently, and usually it's very high pitch, like sometimes when I'm guiding meditations, I start to hear in my left ear this very gentle ringing and it brings me very pleasant frequency. It's usually when your brain starts uh, getting used to a certain higher frequency. Frequency is a sound and sometimes when we are not used to it, we experience like a gentle pitch that um, it's like a recalibration of certain systems so we can get used to higher frequencies when it's pleasant and when you feel like there is a connection happening it's often a sign of channeling so usually when i'm doing guided meditations it's really a process where i remove myself from whatever is coming through me and that's usually when it happens sometimes also when i'm making this kind of videos it happens and it may be happening to you as well when you're meditating or maybe when you're writing or when you're maybe talking or doing something, painting, doing music or something like that. It just means that um, your brain is kind of catching a certain higher frequency. Just allow it to happen and, and see, you know, try not to think about it and just feel it. When you get more into a feeling, you will think less. So it's very tricky, right? When you start to think about something, you will start thinking more about it. But when you focus on a feeling, you will start thinking less and you will feel more. So when you think less, you feel more. When you feel more, you sense connection. You are connected, you are united. That's the power of feeling. So always know that. If it's very hard for you to detach from thinking, then focus on feeling something. Place your attention to a certain area, doesn't matter, maybe in your heart, maybe inside of your head, like between your ears or between your eyes, and just hold your attention there and focus on a feeling. Even if it's a negative feeling, if you will stay focused on it, at some point it will release its tension and and you will experience a certain type of release. The fourth sign you may experience that you are channeling is a sudden rush in creativity. You see, higher you go on frequency spectrum, higher the energy, and higher the energy, more we feel creative. That's why many times creativity is such a healing process. You see, it doesn't matter how hard your life was, through any type of creating, you're doing a healing. It can be music, it can be art, it can be talking, it can be writing. Creativity is such a healing process. And sometimes, through creative work, we also start channeling. We start channeling wisdom, like ancient wisdom. We start channeling something that's uh, important to be known in this present time for whoever will come across your work. Sometimes if you're painting, it uh, can be a type of a channeling. You see, it's a very beautiful thing 
that may happen to you and also when you're experiencing like a sudden rush in creativity if you can take a pause in your life and really focus on what's coming to you start writing about it maybe start drawing about it when i've started painting i needed to draw any vision that i have that I had back at the time, now I can remember it, I can memorize it, but in the past I needed to draw it, I needed to sketch it so I would not forget about it. But then there's also something else. When you have this kind of channelings, if you will not use them, if you will stop receiving them. I've noticed this in my art career. A certain vision is keep, like it's just returning, it's coming to me. But it's only coming to me for a certain period of time. Then if I will not use it, it will be gone. I will not feel inspired anymore. Even if I would say after one month I will start working on it, I will not feel inspired anymore for it. And sometimes it may happen that I can find someone else who painted it or drew it. That's how the universe has chosen you. And if you don't use what it gave you, it will find someone else. That's why it's so f so powerful if you respond with big yes to what's finding you, to what's coming to you as a sudden rush in creativity. Never ignore that. That's how the source is speaking to you. Never ignore that. The fifth sign that you're channeling is a powerful rush of clarity about what was unclear for you before. So this is very powerful, you know, sometimes we really need to get out of the way. Like, for example, if you're struggling with finances, by constantly thinking about how will you resolve it, most probably you will not find a solution, right? So usually I found, in my life, I found a way to just do something else. Like if I would be struggling with certain whatever thing, I would just start doing something else, like I would go painting, I would go out for a run or on a bike, or I would go travel. Something that's very powerful for me is just to go to sit in my car and just drive without any goal. It just free me. I don't know why, but it works for me. And when I do that, I experience clarity about what was unclear for me before. That's when you channel an insight. A realization, uh, an answer, or whatever you needed. So the point is that you learn to get yourself out of your way. You stop forcing the outcome or the answer or anything, and you allow the universe to bring you in a divine time. So a great ma mantra here is that everything finds me at the best possible time. And when you really know this, when you really know the meaning behind these words, you will stop forcing things to happen. You will do your best at whatever you're doing. You will do everything you can at it or at that work or at whatever. And then you move out of your way and you do other things or you go resting, you go on a meeting or you do other things, you remove yourself. That's how clarity about what was unclear before can take place. The sixth sign is very beautiful as well. Increase in vivid dreams, especially dreams that are repeating, right? In dreams we receive many incredible answers. That's how usually channeling is happening because your conscious, your analytical mind is sleeping. So you're more open to the vastness of your subconscious world, right? Your infinite amounts of knowledge that you already possess within. Vivid dreams are very powerful messages for us, especially the ones that are repeating. So if a certain type of a dream is repeating to you, write it down and then question it. Like if it's still unclear before you go to sleep, you can give an or set an intention, please reveal me a sign or an answer. What do I need to know from this dream? What do I need to learn? The point is that you find your own answer. Like, maybe you can Google it or maybe you can ask other people what they think about it, but most often you will find your own answer. Of course, it can also come through others, but use the one that really resonates with you. If it awakens 
fear it's most probably not the right one it needs to resonate with you the seventh sign you're channeling is that when a random thought triggers an intense joy this is a sign of channeling that's how your guides or source awakens some type of an interest or interest within you or a certain type of curiosity very beautiful like sometimes it may just happen like you've been in sadness you've been maybe feeling disconnected but then something spontaneous happened awakens incredible amount of joy within you that's where you've channeled something you needed to know and really respond to it whatever it was take it and do something with it it's very important you see to do something with it because otherwise it's you close the channel you see it's actually a very great responsibility that's why when we start evolving more spiritually we recognize that everything requires a certain amount of responsibility everything is becomes very valuable whatever experience in our lives is valuable finding solution to it is very important and then learning from all the events again very very important we become quite more responsible for our lives and when we try when we learn the power of responsibility then our channel starts opening up and we're ready for this higher knowledge that starts coming to us and then we also need to learn the difference between our inner voice our inner chatter or what they call in buddhist teachings the monkey mind from this deeper voice that is usually more vivid but more gentle it's very gentle so you need to learn to distance your ego mind or your inner talk from this let's say voice of truth so again for example when i'm making these videos i need to distance myself away so i can hear the flow that's coming through me and it's a certain type of a skill that we learn when we start doing anything that's very valuable and meaningful to us and we want to you know enter the flow state where things can move through ourselves and when a random thought triggers an intense joy it came from this voice of truth so really respond to it and the last sign the eighth sign is a greater sense of connection with the source or god or spirit whatever is your word when you experience an intense connection just be in it you know it's a sign that um, your body has relaxed something happened maybe you've been out in the nature maybe you've heard something nice maybe a song activated it enjoying it because that's where your body is rejuvenating most probably you're getting certain insights or you're just feeling a sense of connection it's a sign that your nervous system is releasing something old a healing is happening right now it's happening to many people because we are receiving many new higher energies so to many of us it may be happening that here and there we just experience this spontaneous sense of connection of unity of oneness and when it happens if you can just be with you and maybe place your hands onto your heart and just being gratitude being of being reverence being love because our soul has its own language rudolf steiner was teaching it a lot he said that a feeling is the food for the soul as the food is <laughs> a food for your body so the soul has its own language it speaks in reverence it speaks in awe it speaks in connection it speaks in love and when you experience this kind of sensations you're feeling your soul 
And that is a very beautiful connection that happens, that reminds you of who you truly are. That's why there is a power to love, there is a power to reverence. And when you live more in reverence to truth, to life, to knowledge, you kind of start activating your soul, you start remembering who you truly are, and therefore your life will start bringing you synchronicities that will just take you on a whole new path. Very powerful thing you can do. So, my friends, as Albert Einstein said, a human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in, te- in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. And it's just the process of expansion of consciousness until each individual remembers and re-experiences that there is no separation between your mind and universal mind. It's just attachment to ideas, to beliefs, to certain way of looking on life and feeling about life that makes us disconnected. But it's not the problem that we are disconnected. The problem usually is that we don't take ourselves onto a journey of healing. And the journey of healing is a process of detaching and releasing, letting go of what is not helpful to us, letting go of what is toxic to us, letting go of what is dimming our light. And through that process, we start experiencing reconnection, reawakening, recalibration, and we become more stable in being. So we go from thinking about spirituality into becoming more as spirits right? In physics, they would say, you go from matter to energy. As energy slows down its frequency, at some point it becomes matter, like E is is, um, mc square, the famous formula by Albert Einstein, who discovered that everything is energy until it's, until energy slows down its frequency, And at some point it becomes visible. A certain potential becomes visible. But if you take whatever material, like a pencil or anything, and start moving it with a speed of light, at some point it will disappear from our eyesight and it will become pure potential once again. So when we start raising our frequency, it's not really an act of raising our frequency. It's just detachment from these ideas of who we think we are and this emotional attachments of how much we are, you know, in pain and in suffering because whatever happened to us. We find a form of healing that works for us as you're finding a way of healing that works for you and I found and I'm finding what works for me. Through the process of healing, we are detaching from what is not serving us anymore. And through the process of detachment, we're just like, we would be letting go of the rocks that were on our shoulders, not even knowing they were there, like letting go of the backpack of pain. And slowly we just become more energy and less matter. We become more spirit and less just human. We become again human beings, right? Being human, not just human, not just some little individual that is powerless, but becoming powerful being, being human, right? So this is a very powerful process. It's a slow one. So take it easy. Be easy on yourself. Be gentle with yourself. But at the same time, sometimes push yourself into change, into growth when you feel it's necessary, when you feel you're being stuck or too attached to something, push yourself into something new. But listen to your heart. Your intuition will tell you what you need to know. So my friends, I hope you found a very valuable lesson today. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. Till next time.
one love. Hey, my friend, I hope you found great value in today's message. And I want to invite you into our freshly created and opened store, attractpassion.com, where you can find all of my art. So if you found my art inspiring, you can get a copy of it. You can also get some of my original paintings. So go and check it out. You can use the code PASSION15 and you will get 15 off on your first order. I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you feel like you would like to deepen your journey a little bit and you're kind of aligned with my work, you can go and check out the link in the description of this video and book a session. So check it out. And thanks to everyone for joining our Patreon community where you have access to community chat and some exclusive content, some guided workshops and so much more. So check it out and don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you found this video very valuable, share it with a friend. Thank you so much. Let's spread some inspiration, some good energy and see you in the next one. Much love.